You want that which should poise and ballast your heart. Formality in religion will be apt to creep upon you, and that lays the soul open to all temptations in their full power and strength. Satisfaction and delight in creature comforts, the poison of the soul, will be apt to grow upon you. In such a time, be vigilant, be circumspect, or you will be surprised. Job says that in his affliction, quote, God made his heart soft, unquote, Job 23.16. There is a hardness, an insensible want of spiritual sense, gathered in prosperity, that, if not watched against, will expose the heart to the deceits of sin and baits of Satan. Watch and pray in this season. Many men's negligence in it has cost them dear. Their woeful experience cries out to take heed. Blessed is he that fears always, but especially in a time of prosperity. As in part was manifested before, a time of the slumber of grace, of neglect in communion with God, of formality in duty, is a season to be watched in, as that which certainly has some other temptation attending it. Let a soul in such an estate awake and look about him. His enemy is at hand, and he is ready to fall in such a condition as may cost him dear all the days of his life. His present estate is bad enough in itself, but it is an indication of that which is worse that lies at the door. The disciples that were with Christ in the mount had not only a bodily, but a spiritual drowsiness upon them. What says our Savior to them? Quote, Arise, watch and pray, that you enter not into temptation." Unquote. We know how near one of them, Peter, was to a bitter hour of temptation, and not watching as he ought, he immediately entered into it. I mentioned before the case of the spouse, Song of Solomon 5, 2-8. She slept and was drowsy and unwilling to gird up herself to a vigorous performance of duties in a way of quick, active communion with Christ. Before she is aware, she has lost her beloved. Then she moans, inquires, cries, endures woundings, reproaches, and all before she obtains him again. Consider, then, O oh poor soul, your state and condition. Does your light burn dim? Or though it give to others as great a blaze as formerly, Yet you see not so clearly the face of God in Christ by it as you have done? 2 Corinthians 4, 6 Is your zeal cold? Or if it do the same works as formerly, yet your heart is not warmed with the love of God and to God in them as formerly, but only you proceed in the course you have been in? Are you negligent in the duties of praying or hearing? Or if you do observe them, you do it not with that life and vigor as formerly? Do you flag in your profession? Or if you keep it up, yet your wheels are oiled by some sinister respects from within or without? Does your delight in the people of God faint and grow cold? Or is your love to them changing from that which is purely spiritual into that which is very carnal, upon the account of suitableness of principles and natural spirits, if not worse foundations? If you are drowsing in such a condition as this, take heed. You are falling into some woeful temptation that will break all your bones and give you wounds that shall stick by you all the days of your life. Yea, when you awake, you will find that it has indeed laid hold of you already, though you perceive it not. It has smitten and wounded you, though you have not complained nor sought for relief or healing. Such was the state of the church of Sardis, quote, the things that remained were ready to die, unquote. Revelation 3, 2. Be watchful, says our Savior, and strengthen them, or a worse thing will befall you. If any that reads the word of this direction be in this condition, if he has any regard of his poor soul, let him now awake, before he be entangled beyond recovery. Take this warning from God. Despise it not.